Oh, nice. So it's a good tip, you guys should no see it. As we see four play, pick up a wonderful headshot for the And four play is continuing to dominate everyone right now. What up, channel? It's 4Play, and this is another episode of the Pro Scene. This is episode 26. The gameplay you're watching is a team scrim, or actually a game battles match, over the past weekend that we played. As always, I'm here with Sharp, and today we're going to be talking about how to become a better SMB player, especially in MW3. Uh, as a lot of you know, Sharp was known in COD4, especially for his SMB skills, and myself as well. So I think we're pretty knowledgeable in this situation, and definitely, do you want to talk about it? Explain your piece, and then I'll talk. Oh, well, yeah, I can kind of talk about how I, like, in, in the early times, when I, before game battles, before I started playing game battles, one of the best ways for me to learn stuff from Search and Destroy was going into public matches. Now, um, and, and what I mean by that is when you go in there and you die to, like, a nade spot, watch the kill cam, because sometimes you can learn nades from just random kids in pub matches that throw off lucky nades. Uh, you can learn spots, places to go when you plant the bomb, so use pubs to your advantage. Yep, um, also, s and is strat-based. Especially in my opinion, uh, your team needs to have breakouts. That means stuns, flashes, and prenades all in coordinated spots. And if you're talking individually becoming better, then you need to know every stun, every prenade, and uh, every flash spot that there is, as well as con uh, coordinated rushes. And coordinated meaning whether you're playing doubles or you're playing 4v4, it really doesn't matter. If one person is stunning, the other person needs to be able to rush. Take Dome, for example. You have someone stun out through the windows up at the top of the building. That means you should have two people rushing towards like uh, the loading dock side of the map. And all that is something that is really going to make a huge difference in your S&D game. Um, as far as individual clutching, that's one of the biggest factors that can separate good players from great players. I think that individual clutching starts at the base root of everything. And that's if you're left in a 1v4 situation, you want to take it slow. You need to feel out the game and you need to make moves that the other team wouldn't expect. And that can be the hardest part. But sometimes you want to do the unexpected and that's run in the middle of the map or like whatever the case may be. Slowly pick one, pick two, and then turn the game around. Once you like once you're in a like position where you take out two to three players, the game is now in your favor because normally the other person is gonna play so campy or back off that you can control the map in situations. Yeah, and something that I want to touch on there with what you said about, you know, sometimes just run out in the middle of the map. Don't, don't be predictable. You can't be a predictable player. Don't go to the same spot every single round. Uh, if you go one place and get three kills, don't, don't go there again because it's probably not going to work. They're going to expect it. Uh, and just do unpredictable things. Maybe rush the spawn, try to flank. Maybe rush right up the bomb side. Do things that uh, the other team's not going to expect and you'll catch them off guard. Also, find certain spots on the map that you feel comfortable controlling. And that means, like, go into a map by yourself and just run around it and find spots that other people don't know, whether it's, like, little jump-up spots, whether it's um, pre-nade spots, whether it's spots that you can see after you plant the bomb. That's another big thing. Um, after you put the bomb down, you need to have a spot already planned in your head where you're going. Unless it's a 1v4 and the map is closed up, then you obviously have to play smarter. But you need to find certain spots on the map that you feel comfortable playing, and then on defense, you can run those spots as well. Um... Controlling rounds is another big factor. Did you want to explain to them how controlling certain rounds, like for defensive-sided maps or offensive heavy maps, that it would be better and they need to play for kills? Oh uh, yeah, well there's sometimes let's take let's let's look at underground for instance. Uh, offense on that map is extremely hard. It's extremely hard to get inside of where God, I've been playing so B bomb. I want to say uh, a bomb, a bomb, a bomb, a bomb. Where you have to cross over by where the white truck is. It's so hard to play offense on that map because you just get trapped in your spawn. You know they push up someone middle in the train yard, and then they have people watching the right side of the map, and someone watching the flank, you just get trapped in the spawn. So sometimes on that map, it's smart. If you're, you know, say you get the bomb planted, uh, and there's uh, not enough time to get the def defuse off, maybe go for kills, try to play for defense, you know. Uh, or if it's like a 1v4 situation, don't just run out there and die. Try to pick off a couple people, go for kills, play for the defensive round. Uh, or if you want offense, then maybe let the other team kill you uh, yeah. and, and try to play like that. For those of you that don't know, you get defense if you have, obviously, more kills than the opposing team. And then you get offense if you have less kills. So what he's saying is, for maps like, in my opinion, Underground, term, uh, Terminal, those are all defensive-based maps. But maps like Bootleg, I want offense as many times as I can because I feel offense is better than that um, if you run it right. Obviously, you have to have your strats down and stuff. All right, obviously, these are just our opinions, but try to do what works for you. I think that pretty much wraps up this episode. Yeah, guys, that's going to do it. Um, as always, submit your questions to me via Twitter or YouTube. 
and we'll get them answered. This is Proceed number 26. Peace. Peace.